prognosis is excellent in spite of my present condition. And uh, I'm getting stronger every day. Um, the experience of all the love and caring that I've had in the past month is probably more than most people experience in a lifetime. And I really will cherish that forever. Ten months ago, I nearly died in a motorcycle crash. Yes, I faced death. But I thought I'd better come back and buy some life insurance for my children. Hello, I'm Etta McQuarrie. And I'm joking, of course. But if we lose the power to laugh, we lose the power to think. As I was recovering from a life trauma, I knew that I would have to direct all my thoughts and energy towards healing and recovery and that I would have to take immediate action. No one could do it for me. Fortunately for me, it wasn't my time to go. And I know that I had divine intervention that helped save my life and brought me where I am today. In just one month longer than it takes to give birth to a new life, I created a new me. I would like to share with you how having a will not the kind your relatives fight over when you die, but the strong will to live saved my life. And what an active life I've always enjoyed, from childhood to motherhood. Professionally, I was an award-winning public health administrator and educator, working for San Diego County and participating in many community events and I was involved in several women's organizations. But it was physical activity that was my truest passion. Wow, I did it all. Yes, I love sports, but it was this pastime, riding my Harley Davidson, that became the turning point of my entire life. On January the 24th, 1999, I was riding my Harley Dynaglide to Idlewild, California when I came around a curve and went head on with a pickup truck. Unfortunately, I went airborne and the ground is really hard when you hit. I was life flighted to Desert Regional Hospital in Palm Springs and I wasn't expected to live. I had multiple compound fractures of all four limbs a punctured lung, and a fractured skull. In all, I broke 20 bones in my body that would start me on a physical, mental, and spiritual quest of healing and recovery. Not only did I shatter parts of my body, but I shattered my whole life. Before January 1999, I was the epitome of good health. You've gotten the picture of a dynamic, highly motivated, and successful professional woman who was definitely her own person. The crash would completely change everything. After the crash, I was forced to slow down. A wheelchair became my only transportation. The simplest tasks were out of my reach, doing makeup, dressing alone, or wearing my favorite pair of boots. Even now, 10 months later, my entire perspective on life has changed. I am much more relaxed, and I have learned patience and humility. One of the greatest lessons I learned from all of this is that you don't have to be toothless to use a bedpan, and you also don't need to lose your dignity, especially if the person bringing your bedpan is young and gorgeous. I discovered that yesterday's crisis is today's opportunity for laughter. This crash was an opportunity for me to experience healing on all levels and to discover what personal power was really all about. I had experienced many challenges before, but this one would bring my destiny to life. Now the simplicity of life has profound meaning to me. Kind words from a friend, the perfect face of my kitten Buttons, who's been my constant companion throughout this healing process. Now I use the freedom of my mobility to sing in my soul and dance with my heart and work out via great communication with my friends and bask in the sunlight of all the love and friendship and prayers that pulled me through. 
Now I know who and what is important to me. My priorities and passions are definitely in place. Living a healthy, balanced, and more relaxed lifestyle. Teaching and coaching individuals and groups about health, nutrition, exercise, and a positive mental attitude. Sharing time, ideas, and special thoughts like these provocative words I recently read. The spiritual needs we all have for love, compassion, meaning, acceptance, and inner peace are not grand goals to be achieved in a distant time and place. They exist here and now. I realize my life is an exciting journey down an untraveled road, but I no longer have the compulsion to race through life. I take time. That's the gift I've been given. You see, in most cases, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to one's life. In my case, there's a beginning, a middle, an end, and now, a new beginning.